What's up guys, I'm Josh, and today we're gonna to be reviewing the 7 Hertz and Critical Collaboration for the Dioko, which is a tall task for them because this is supposed to be one of, if not the cheapest, planar IEMs on the market right now coming in at $99. Before we get into the full review, a couple quick notes. This was sent to me for free. I'm not being paid, asked, or otherwise requested to say anything good or bad about this headphone. All thoughts here are my own. So I really wanna focus on the design for just a second. Um, I don't like it at all. It's physically huge, so you see it everywhere. It's very flashy. It's not really my particular design preference, but apparently this is tempered glass, which is cool. That means that it's probably not gonna scratch like plastic or break like typical glass, which is, which is amazing if you do happen to drop these. Don't recommend that though. But the main problem with this thing is the size. Now this is a problem that most planar headphones face and that's where I think most of them fail. It's like when I listen to IEMs, I listen to them for a very long time. I edit with them, I watch movies with them, I listen to music with them. And if they're big, they're typically not very comfortable. Now this makes a couple of comfort mistakes in my opinion. One is the physical size and weight, like having glass on the outside, that's not gonna help the weight very much. But they've also chosen uh, kind of not so great choices to relieve that sort of pressure. So one of them is that the ear tips that these come with are relatively hard compared to some other ear tips that I've tried. Like if you compare this to some Moondrop spring tips, uh, they are much softer. Though it is notable that this does come with a lot of aftermarket multicolored ear tips, which is kind of a cool addition. I appreciate seeing that. Another thing that they, I think, missed the mark on a little bit is the over ear hook. So this can act as sort of a strain relief for your ear canal if you have a heavy IEM. But the way that they've chose to design the hook makes it so that it actually, at least on my ears, just kind of clears my ear entirely and doesn't use it as a, uh, a resting place for the weight of the IEM. And that's because of the, the big strain relief and the stiff strain relief that they've chosen to use on an otherwise very, very nice cable. I do like this cable for $100 IEM. It's braided very nicely. And the material choice of it and the looks of it seem to be quite nice. Now I have no problem with flashier designs. Like I really enjoyed the watch-esque styling of the Sony Z1R, but something about the way that this looks in person just doesn't really strike me as like super high end. I'm just cautioning you a lot here because in photos it looks pretty good, in videos it'll probably look pretty cool, but in person it does strike me as being a little cheap and cheesy. So for comfort, for me, it's not great. Mileage is of course gonna vary and aftermarket cables will help with that strain relief a little bit and aftermarket tips might help as well. So that is notable. It's not the most uncomfortable IEM I've ever tried at all by any means. Most of the super uncomfortable have like an extremely large diameter ear stem and this is relatively kind of average, I would say. A couple quick notes, uh, it does come with you know, a carry case, a pretty nice one for $100. This also does feature a double-sided array magnet structure, which is appreciated. I also think that the uh, size of the diaphragm is a little under 15 millimeters. Okay, so now for sound quality. This is a very, very polarizing IEM. It's got a couple redeeming features, but in an overall, not very great sound signature in my opinion for the cost. The main problem with this thing is just how bright the top end gets. The treble response is really irritating for my ear particularly. It seems to be quite sharp in both the S and the T range, though it's not sibilance in the traditional nature of loss of detail. It's just got a lot of presence there. Now this can be helped with EQ and a lot of the problems with this and any headphone can be helped with EQ. Personally, I don't tend to use EQ a lot, and I don't review any headphone with EQ and I'm not going to with this one. So the trouble for me is a problem. There's actually two problem areas. One is that S and T range, it comes across quite sharp and it makes a lot of uh, music just not all that enjoyable. But two, there's actually a second peak in the upper trouble that makes it a uh, very um, kind of airy sounding, but a little bit overboard. So some music, uh, for example, Latch from Sam Smith, actually comes across incredibly energetic in the top end and it's just a little bit too far and the song final ascent from han zimmer they are both lovely songs to listen to but they just come across with way too much energy in the top end and they're just quite harsh and even though the songs should be relatively easy this headphone i think doesn't play them very well this is a little bit of a double-edged sword on one hand yes it kind of hurts my experience with this on the other hand it makes this sound like an incredibly detailed headphone and i'm actually very very impressed with the detail resolution of this IEM. Now, a lot of that I think is coming from that more forward nature of the treble response and it has its costs like a lot of other detailed um, IEMs and headphones can, but 
it is very detailed. I do want to state that it's a very, very detailed headphone. So for the mid-range, I find this to be a little bit disappointing. For tonality, I find it to be pretty limited. I don't find it to really express a lot of vocal timbre flexibility. Like it sounds like the voice, but it doesn't really give a whole lot of extra uh, quality or coloration behind it, which I guess for $100 is not great. But when you compare it to some other headphones, which I'll do in a second, I think that uh, it's a little bit limited. The main problem with the mid range though, is that it seems to have a pretty big dip in all of the lower mids and sort of the middle of the mid range, where it just seems like the voice is just kind of thin and very far away. And even though it's detailed, I really wish it would be pushed more forward. This isn't always a problem. I don't actually dislike V-shaped headphones, which this is sort of a V-shaped headphone. But the problem with this one is just how boosted the treble frequencies are relative to the mid-range, where it just doesn't come across very well. And when you try another headphone, you really realize how much stuff is missing from that mid-range. I have more thoughts on mid-range, but I wanna move on to bass really quick and then I'll tie both together in a second. For bass, this is A plus performance. It's got amazing bass, possibly some of the best bass that I've heard for a hundred dollars. This bass is what I would consider to be high fidelity bass. It's not necessarily going to be the thumpiest or the strongest bass that you've ever heard, though it hits quite hard, but it's the way that it hits that is the really impressive part. It is not bloated or boxy in any way. It seems incredibly clean, which is good. Matched with the driver's seemingly very impressive resolution capabilities makes for both a clean and detailed bass experience. And then it gets very strong when you get down low towards like 20 hertz, it seems to get better in that area, which is very, very impressive and not something that I see a lot until very, very high end high ems. It won't quite have the impact that some bass heads are probably going to prefer. I think this is just sort of a limitation of some planar designs. Uh, this one seems to be like that as well. The initial punch behind it isn't quite as strong as a typical dynamic IEM can be. Uh, but it isn't bad. And I think that after getting used to how the delivery happens, which is still impactful, it's just not the most impactful. Once you get used to it though, I think you really start to see the advantages of not having an overly punchy initial bass hit where bass just seems much cleaner because of it. It seems a lot more controlled and not so much like just trying to force all the bass it can down your ear canal. Now, while this is not a knock against the bass response or performance, but this does show you how reliant on mid-range uh, instruments really are, uh, even on the bassier side of instruments. So when you're talking about basses or cellos or kick drums, because of the lack of mid-range here, because of that, that really limited forwardness to the mid-range, you get a very, very dry experience for the sound of an instrument. So when you're listening to a kick drum, it hits in the bass, but you don't really hear the body of the instrument. You don't hear the general sound of it very well. You kind of just feel it, you hear the notes, but they don't really have any life to them. So without that mid-range, things just don't really pop that much. A great example of this is Chocolate Chip Trip from Tool. This is a fantastic imaging and sound staging test, but it's also a phenomenal drum recording. Now they seem to emphasize the kick drum quite a bit to get you a little bit more dynamic slam on the bass response. And this headphone, you hear the bass really well, but when you switch over to something like a Moondrop Aria, you just hear that drum so much better. It doesn't have quite the bass response that this has, but the mid-range fulfillment is just beautiful compared to this. And you really get the sense of like, oh, there's so much more in this music than what I can hear with this thing. Okay, so for imaging and soundstage, imaging is good and soundstaging is good, but not really as spectacular as I was hoping for a planar like this. I think planars can have an advantage of sounding very open, though this is a closed back planar design and that may be affecting it's a sound staging capability. Sounds basically happen from here inwards. Uh, I couldn't really get it to throw the illusion of being outside my head very much. Something like an Aria can do that, but this just couldn't. Now the bass response ability and cleanliness and power allows for things to sound large and powerful and like very, uh, deep from a sense of like scale, but not really deep in the sense of staging. 
And so you can get these very powerful songs, like large scale orchestral recordings can sound very strong, but not all that far out. This does differ from that aria, like I mentioned, where the aria seems much wider and a little bit more finite, even for resolution. There are two very different takes on uh, scale presentation. One has an effective sound staging illusion farther out. The other one has more of a sense of like impact and, and just like guts behind the music. Though both I do think are pretty good, but I do wish this was a little bit better. Now my conclusion, while making a planer at this price has to be incredibly difficult, at the end of the day, I have to basically give you advice as a consumer if you should buy this. I think by this review, you can probably see, probably not. I do think that the bass response is amazing and should be rewarded, but I think that there's too many missing areas of sound other than that. Even though the bass will be impressive for a while, it's not a good enough IEM in other categories to really sustain, in my opinion, a $100 purchase. So what I would recommend personally instead is something like a Moondrop Aria, but I would get aftermarket tips for it. I'm running uh, Final Audio uh, Type E tips that emphasizes the bass response a little bit more, gives it a little bit more treble response. And uh, the mid-range on this is just far and ahead better than that of the Dioco. That's really the game changer here is how that mid-range performs and uh, a little asterisk on just how bright that top end is. Okay, that's gonna be it. Um, I would love to see an iteration number two of this. Uh, I think it's got a lot of capability. And again, EQ is always an option for headphones like this. I could not quite get this to sound better than I could get the Aria to sound personally, but there's a lot more people who are more talented and spend more time EQing than I do. So your results may vary on that. Thank you very much for watching. See you guys later. Bye.